If you truly understand psychology, that alone is gonna help you capture attention. And yeah. that's what's required to go viral. Hooks are not only auditory of what you're saying, but it can also just be a visual hook. Here in your garage, yeah. I had a Lambo with a bookshelf behind. It yeah. Was, yeah. In a world where content is king and going viral is the ultimate goal, one man has cracked the code to success. Meet Logan Forsyth, the founder and co-CEO of Mediascaling.com. We posted mm -hmm. over 230,000 times. We track everything. With our packages, we'll create 20 to 40 secondary accounts per client, and that's across platforms. We find the best success of this on the top five short form platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat. I see people just doing stupid stuff. It's gonna go viral. But yeah. you're destroying your brand. You can't monetize that. Look at short form content right now is the biggest opportunity to create as much top of funnel reach, yep. brand awareness, exposure, and then let's funnel that down yes. to long form if you have it is it credible for converting into customers. Logan, let's talk about scaling to a billion views a month. All right. A bill a month. I just had my master, my syndicate mastermind in LA, and there was a woman there, Adley. She's doing mm -hmm. like a yeah. billion a month. And so I know that's the game you play and one of the things you, you know, you're a master of. So, by the way, who do you think gets the most views of anybody? Well, I'm going to give you my educated guess, but I want to hear yours. Any platform, organic views, social. Of anybody, the one that's talked about the most is Mr. Beast, but there's yeah. like, there's a kid that's younger. I don't remember the name of the brand. And yeah. I've been told in the YouTube space that kid more. is doing bigger numbers. But across all platforms, what human you think, who you think is getting the most annual, uh, monthly or daily views? Across all platforms. Yeah. I would assume uh, there's a lot of crossover from YouTube. And yeah. so then we're getting into the conversation. Are we including only their accounts or also all the accounts that are featuring their content? Because uh, it doesn't have to be their own. Like in general, it could be a person who doesn't on. even have social media. Uh -huh. the, the, the path to a billion views a month. That's, you know, I took three years off my personal brand, needed a break. Mm. just And now I'm ramping back up my personal brand. And I'm like, ah. I've done, I'm trying to think if I ever did a billion views in a month. Probably, definitely for at least one month. Um, I never tracked as closely as people track now. Mm. I remember being like, I was a, I know I was at one point, I think the fastest growing Instagram account. I was growing like a million a month, December 2016. And I was doing all this stuff and I kind of turned it off because I, I realized you don't want to be that big. <laughs> There's a lot of downside to getting a billion views or, a, you know, 10 billion. But my, mm. I think it's Donald Trump. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. If you go to Twitter yeah. or X and you look at the trending, mm -hmm. the consistent, it, it's either one or two people. It's a sports person or it's Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. More in the Kardashians. A sports, though, is the number. Everywhere I travel around the world, I check Twitter. It's like, oh, every country in the world sports trends more than anything yeah. the opiate of the masses Karl marx the communist said was religion was the opiate of masses i'm like not anymore brother it's music and sports mm -hmm. that's the other thing that trends the most music mm -hmm. musicians put trend mm -hmm. so i think it's like it's like ronaldo i think has the most instagram followers yep mm -hmm. but he doesn't post a lot right which brings me to so you've got a big agency you're out here scaling some of the biggest names. We've worked together on stuff. You think uh, you think it's a quantity? If, I know it's quantity and quality. Mm -hmm. Every smart right. person in the game knows that. Mm -hmm. But if you had to pick one, I'm not even sure there's a right answer. What's your answer? And then I'll answer after you. Picking one Would is- Would you go quantity or quality? Picking one is quality. Because you can't yeah. polish a turd. So yes. if your content sucks and then you're yes. posting it everywhere, no one's gonna see it because it sucks. But, but so, okay, but let me make it a little tougher. Because I would agree with that, but on a one to ten scale, mm -hmm. okay, ten being the most viral, fascinating, hip hypnotic content, would you rather be an eight in quality of content? Okay, cool. So it's good. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. the best, but it's it's good. Mm -hmm. And a ten in quantity. You know how to like this is something you mm -hmm. do: create sub accounts, put them on all platforms. Or inverse, your content quality mm -hmm. is a 10. It's the best, and but you're only an eight on quantity. I would Who still wins go, between that? I would still go 10 quality 
a quantity because okay. a quantity is still strong. You know, you're still getting a lot yeah. out there. And, you know, Mr. Beast, we already talked about him, could fall into that bucket. Yeah, for uh, That's sure. something that he talks about a lot is just putting in so much more extra effort into your yes. content. And the fact of when you're at that last mileage degree of if your video is 10% better yeah. than others, that can result in 50 million, 100 million more views on that one video for that extra 10% yes. effort, right? But how do you so, explain the Kardashians? The Kardashians. Do you consider them a 10 of content quality? A ten of content quality. That's <laughs> or an eight. Yeah, that's a good post question. I like to play uh, devil's uh, advocate here. I, you know, it because they very definitely subjective. won at the game. Right, it's, like, it's very subjective. To me, it's not, but to a lot of how do you women explain pop music? Do you consider that a ten? Pop music. Do you think Taylor Swift or do you think, you know, country music person? You think they're ten in musical quality, like Bach, Beethoven, mm -hmm. or they just have good distribution? Because, well, like, I think, like, pop music, most of the pop people, I'm not picking on one pop person. I was mm -hmm. listening to the new Beyonce, Miley Cyrus. Somebody was playing it around me. They knew her version of Dolly Parton. Mm. And it's like, mm, is this a 10 of me? Like, would Rachmaninoff or Brahms, if they came back to life, be like, this is a 10 uh -huh. on the music? I don't think so. Yeah. Like, maybe Michael Jackson, some of his stuff was like a 10. Mm you know, musical quality, Quincy Jones putting out, but Michael Jackson had quality and he had distribution. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what it's, it's basically, if you're in social media, I got 8 million followers. It's like, you got two things, quality, like you said, Charlie Munger can't polish a turd, mm -hmm. but you also need distribution. So let me make this yeah. even harder. And those of you watching, think about this is a tough, this one's now tough. You can have a 10 of quality okay. and a five of distribution quantity or inverse. A five of quality. It's good enough. People will listen to it. Mm -hmm. It's nothing special, but you're distributing amazingly well. Mm -hmm. So you think a 10 with only five, because like Mr. Beast has 200, he, he followed me for years and he, he came up to visit me. He wanted to meet me. And he's like, had 25 million followers. This is in like 2020, I think. Okay. And in 2019, he's like, next time you see me, I'm going to have like 200 million. Now he has 220 million. Mm. So he has the distribution. So let's yep. go back. You got Mr. Beast or whoever you want to say, Donald Trump, at the beginning. And he had 10 quality, but very not very good distribution. He was posting it on an Instagram that has 3,000 followers and a YouTube mm -hmm. that has 3,000. And let's say your goal is making money within 18 months. Within 18 so in the, months. Lo in the long run, mm -hmm. you're gonna win with the quality. You mm -hmm. start out, like take Mr. Beast or take anybody, they started super low. But if you look at Ronaldo, he just putting out basic five content. Mm -hmm. He's like, here's me, I saw another, I saw one recently, he just walked on the beach with his family. I mean, that's not exactly high production value. Mm -hmm. But he has the distribution to whatever, 400 million people. Mm -hmm. so that's why I said, what do you think in that scenario? Well, I w when you were asking for, uh, when you were saying distribution, I was thinking sheer quantity. But also quantity, with but what also you're saying, distribution is like a platform. Everything. Followers and everything. So that yeah. changes it. Yes. And I think that's more important. It's just eyeballs, right? And so yes. if you have a platform that has... Um, an, enough eyeballs behind it, and there's a hundred million people seeing it. Ronaldo, he has—I yes. don't know his following size, but it's—it's it's literally I checked, over the largest million. on Instagram. It's over three hundred million. Yeah, now, yeah. So I he think. doesn't need to post like the most incredible content exactly. to get a huge amount of exposure and views, right? Um, but the but way that he got he there, the way that quality. he got there was quality through his art of That's soccer, right. right? So yeah. it's still, uh, man. And at the end of the day. My opinion on the the matter is it's subjective. Yeah. And data is what really speaks, right? So yeah. like going back to what you talked on of Taylor Swift and current pop music versus Bach and like the classicals. Yeah. And, uh, Taylor Swift, do I like her music? S some of it, most of it, no, but I have respect for her. And at yeah, the end of the day, sure. it doesn't matter what I think. That Look at the charts, look at the numbers, you know? So. But if Bach was alive, uh -huh. I knew how to play that social media game. He could blow past everybody. I wonder what he would do today if he was alive, though, with different culture, different. We well, have everything. Lang Lang. Lang Lang's a classical pianist, and he crushes. 
He crushes. So he Bach would. I mean Mozart, Beethoven. It's it's tough to know. Right. And, and and I guess my whole point is saying that is for everybody listening. The real social media game is how do you keep the quality and the quantity up in the exactly. eight nine tens? Yep. Mm-hmm. Both so what do you think when you look out there? I watch. You know, I try to. I tell people don't watch. Don't scroll for more than twenty minutes a day. If you can help it. So when I'm scrolling through my Insta like this, I'm looking at, I'm just looking at it with an eye of, you know, an eye for what's the new trends, what's working, right. what's trending. Mm-hmm. If you would break down like hyper specific three things in viral engineering, going viral, what do you think it is? Is it the thumbnail? Is it the quality? Is it like high definition cameras, HD versus mm-hmm. older cameras? Is it, you know, opening hooks being crazy and compelling like what let's let's order the ingredients because it's obviously more than three ingredients it's like a lot you could it'd be 50 ingredients but if you had Mm -hmm. to order them that you were training a team you build big teams Mm -hmm. specifically for people yeah who want to grow their social Mm -hmm. you've done this with me you've done this with a lot of big people now what would you rank training in your sop for the top three for the top three for viral content, I would really put it at the foundation of psychology. You, right. If you truly understand psychology, that alone is going to uh, help you capture attention. And yeah. that's what's required to go viral. Right? Yeah. So um, that basic understanding, I mean, y- you could just name that one and be done with it. Yeah. Right? And then you just apply that to the content itself. But from the more tactical perspective, hooks really matter. And yeah. a, a lot of people think when you say a hook, it's like, oh, the three secrets to do X, Y, Z, yeah. like dream outcome. Hooks are not only auditory of what you're saying, but it can also just be a visual hook. Yes. Right? If something intriguing or crazy happens on here the screen at the very start, here in your garage, yeah. I had just, a Lambo with a bookshelf behind. It yep. was a pattern to interrupt. The visual hook. Like, psh, mm-hmm. there's yeah. levels to hooks. So the hook is like, it's, it's just the beginning part of the content, right? And yeah. if that makes it intriguing to people... They stop scrolling. They're like, huh, let me just watch this a little bit more and see what this is about. Yes. Um, that's the most important piece. You know, yeah. you can have the most amazing. So let's go back. Uh, a large part of what we do is repurposing long form to short form for yes. a lot of clients. And arguably the most important part of doing that is the clip selection. You yes. need to be able to choose a great clip with a great hook and then the, the value to back it up, you know, remove the fillers, repeat statements, et cetera. But you can have the most amazing edit and if it doesn't have a good hook, no one's gonna watch it. Yes. Versus if you have a, um, uh, an edit that is subpar, but it has an amazing hook, yes. it can go viral. I've seen some of my stuff, like I test different editors. Uh-huh. So some of the editors are like from, you know, Botswana, they don't even mm-hmm. speak English. And, yeah. and it's crazy. Sometimes stuff they piece together that doesn't even make sense, mm. but the opening hook's gone, has mm. got a million views. And then it just ends on like a weird part. So it's like the opening hook's strong, and then it's just me being like, I like bananas. By the way, this is a cool phone. And then it ends, and it gets a million views because of that opening. Mm. I call I have a fort framework called humps. I'm mm. like, if you ain't going viral, you got to hump more. Okay? Okay. You got to hump. By the way, the word hump is... A hook in and of itself because you remember yep. you got to hump right. more so hump the fur the h and hump is hypnotic opening mm-hmm. i like to think of a hook as hypnotism you know I like it mm-hmm. and so it's like first hook hypnotically so I'll, I'll say to my editors they always send me stuff tie reviews i'm like i ain't gonna look at it just answer me this is this so hypnotic i can't turn away mm-hmm. simple framework like that yep. could i if in a busy world where i'm scrolling and there's crazy Women dancing with almost no clothes on and monkeys ripping people's face off. Like now there's everything on Twitter and stuff. It's like, right. would I stop for this if I didn't know myself? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And a lot of people are putting content out there. I'm like, bro, if you didn't know yourself, you'd never watch your own mm-hmm. content. Yep. I'm like, That's a great yeah. point to bring up. It's like when you create content that is for your audience, but it's also for people who have never seen you before. They don't yeah. know who you are. That's content that can gain a lot of exposure and uh, go viral. So that's a great litmus test. Also, the hip, the hypnotic piece, we got that and learned that from you. It's something that we say often with your team it is not just the hook, but the whole video in general. Yes. We want it to be hypnotic. Yes. Right? And so uh, there's so many factors that goes into that from the visual component itself. One thing you brought up was production quality. Overall, we do see production quality matters. Yeah. Uh, specifically on YouTube, Instagram, overall it helps. 
um, Snapchats, Mixed Bucket. TikTok, though, the pendulum is swinging to where it's right. lower production quality is what's dominating on that platform. Which you know, I like because I loved. Yeah, I was like the king video, that just the grabbed my stuff. phone. Yeah. I was busy doing other stuff. So yeah. you're seeing the pendulum swing. TikTok's a little more, it can look a little more user generated versus studio uh -huh. high quality. Yeah. yeah. But studio high quality still can crush it on yes. TikTok. And the, the downside is the low production quality, like the TikTok style edits that doesn't perform nearly as well on the other right. place. Instagram it can, uh, but still not as common. Yeah. But like YouTube shorts, you don't see uh, content really performing well. So overall, I would say lean towards production. Like at yes. this point, some company stats, we've generated right under 3 billion views. We posted mm -hmm. over 230,000 times uh, and we track everything. Yeah. And we, did, we have enough data to see that production quality matters. Yes. And we get a lot more views when we have higher production versus lower production. So, by the way, on just a practical note for someone listening, if they're going to have multiple accounts, like mm -hmm. Joe Rogan did this really well with JRE Clips mm -hmm. and all this. Yep. He was like the first guy clipping up long form content, I think, really at scale. Mm -hmm. What tools do you like to use to post? Do you like to manually like have five phones and mm -hmm. have staff posts? Or do you use a tool like Buffer or Social Pilot or different tools like yeah. that? Yeah, we don't use any third party tools. Okay. Um, we've seen worse results using them. And there is theory, like the theory piece is that the platforms itself, like they make their money from people using the platform, being on them, watching ads, watching other content. And so that um, is just less likely to happen when you're using the so third party So they're weighting the algorithm slightly towards like posting f inside the app. That's theory, but the, the factual side is that every one of these third party scheduling tools are missing features from the platforms yes. and you want to be utilizing the features to their fullest. Yeah. So you're not just going to check all those boxes if you're using the tools. And also with our accounts, we have our social media managers, mm -hmm. we have accountability checklists in place to where they are not only just posting, but we want them engaging, yes. responding to comments on our posts, but also watching other content. You yes. go through, use it like a real person, like watch content, yeah. like it, comment on other posts. Yes. And uh, yeah, that's your team is not doing People aren't doing enough. Yeah, like it's cr like I started just commenting in the last year. Sometimes my comments, right. I had a comment yeah. get a hundred thousand. Your likes. comments can go viral. I was like, yeah, I got one right now. I always have one that's between ten and fifty thousand likes, and I don't know how good it is for actually engage. You know, turning here's one's got a comment I did. It's got six thousand nine hundred sixty two. And you at least get awareness from that. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh, I see people being like, yo, I haven't seen you in a long time. Boom. Mm -hmm. So comments. So you have your people. So would you recommend, a, let's say there's an online coach who wants to blow themselves up on social. Mm -hmm. How many separate accounts do you recommend to be on Twitter, Snap, Insta, YouTube, Facebook? What's kind of the number? Is it like two on each in addition to your main mm -hmm. personal ones or what? Yeah. So to loop the listeners in, like what yeah. we do is we essentially follow the Andrew Tate strategy, right? We'll yep. uh, create a lot of secondary accounts on top of a client's main socials. Yeah. Uh, but we also help a lot of people scale with their main socials solely first. And that is step one. So I don't recommend you create a bunch of secondary accounts until you start to at least get in the game yeah. and you build up more of a content database because we've also seen that variety is important. So mm -hmm. if you have the same content just being reposted or recirculated across the secondary accounts as well, it doesn't perform as well really? versus if you have a lot of variety going across all the accounts. Yeah. Um, so you want to build up a content database first and then depending on how much content you have to go off of depends on how many accounts you want to create. Um, overall, we have seen best results posting around 5,000 times per month yeah. for clients at like the top level, but we can still create a lot of uh, results and really move the needle, even being around 1,800, 2,000 posts a month. But 5,000, how much of that's unique content? It's not 5,000 original po co so, yeah. posts. Yeah, so the way that maths out is with our packages, we'll create 20 to 40 secondary accounts, total mm -hmm. accounts per client, uh, and that's across platforms. So. We uh, find the best success of this on the top five short form platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat. Yeah. Right. And then we'll create, we call it a batch, but it'll be a username. So like Ty Lopez clips. Yeah. And we'll create that on each one of those platforms. So that's five accounts right there. Right. And then uh, if we're doing 20, that's four accounts per platform. If we're doing 40, that's eight accounts per platform. So we're usually hovering between that range. 
And then we also have a lot of data and have tested posting volume of one post per day, up to 12 posts per day per mm -hmm. account. And we consistently see best results between three to six posts a day. Yeah. Uh, and at least you want to be at like that lower side of three, four posts a day. Yeah. The caveat with that is it needs to be good. You need to yes. have that quality piece, yes. right? And a lot of people that I've talked to have tried to scale up and do higher volumes of their content yeah. at the, degrada the degradation of, of their quality. quality. And yeah, then quality, they blame yeah. it on the volume. Yeah. They're like, ah, oh, it didn't yeah. work when I was doing four posts a day, when really it's their, their quality dropped. And if you can remain that quality and increase volume, we generally, like if you 3X your volume and you have the same quality, many times we see more than a 3X in, yeah. in results because one we look at every post. Is 10. Yeah. yeah, we look at every post as an at bat to go viral. So the more that you post, the more yes. of those outliers that you have as well that just do way above average uh, uh, compared to the rest of them. But at, but, but at 2,000 yeah. posts, so getting back to that. is that seven, 500 unique pieces of content, 200 mm -hmm. unique pieces of content? Yeah. So the way that it masks out is one unique piece of content across five platforms, five total posts, right? Gotcha. And so we're creating 12 to 28 edits per day mm. across these 20 to 40 accounts. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the monthly unique post adds out yeah. to. I just look at, or unique videos. I just yeah. look at it as the total post. But, but it's is it a one to five ratio? Because then you need 400 unique edits to get 2,000 posts. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to get four, and that doesn't mean someone has to record 400 podcasts a month because right. you can edit up. So if somebody was watching and they just want to be like, oh, I like that idea. I'll create, I'll do one podcast, uh, you know, I'll do podcasts and then we cut them up. Mm -hmm. About how many podcasts would, or about how many hours a week does somebody need to record of content? Is it one two hour podcast and that gives you enough per week? Mm. Or is it somebody needs to be, recording in a studio like this eight times a week or two times a week what do you see really because people are busy right people ain't gonna sit down and be like yo you need 2,000 pieces of content great I'm gonna shoot mm -hmm. 2,000 podcasts this year like most people are gonna burn out yeah so what's the practical way you pull that off you know mm -hmm. it depends on the volume that you're at but we like to see people at minimum one hour per week if yeah. you're doing minimum one hour per week uh, then you have enough to be able to do this sustainably and you can still really move the needle on just your main socials. But if you're doing one hour per week, you can also create, again, we call it batches, but these additional usernames. So you could have an additional 15 accounts yeah. on top of your main socials. So that's 20 accounts across those five platforms Yeah, and uh, really move the needle. So you think people need to be full on? Because I see people doing these podcasts. I'm like, ain't nobody in that room. So uh -huh. do you like that approach? Just like build a podcast studio and just go and have questions you ask yourself and yep. you respond to mm -hmm. and the camera never has the cut to show it's an empty room you're talking to. Yeah, yeah. Mock podcast. Yeah, the mock thought. podcast, yeah. the quasi-podcast. Yeah, I love mock podcasts. Yeah. For people, especially for business owners that we talk to yeah. and then people who are more so getting started with their content, I ask people a lot, I'm like, have you ever created content and talked to a camera? Yeah. It's like, yes. And I'm like, did you like it? It's no. Like yeah, right. the, talking to a camera sucks yeah. versus talking to a person. Yes. Right. And then everyone I know who's done podcasts, they generally enjoy it. So especially when you're getting started with content, what I found is mock podcasts are a really easy way to get across that camera shock yes. and uh, just have someone on your team, family member, friend, someone that you have a relationship with, rapport with, they can hold a conversation Yes, and then just prepare however many questions you want beforehand. It do takes, you like that where there's kind of like prompts? Uh -huh. Like, okay, yeah. yeah. what do you think of the three most important things you do this? And then if you're a real estate agent and you're shooting them, I call them mock cast, right? So okay. it's like a nice. yeah. mock cast. So if you're doing a fake podcast, you have a, your brother sitting there mm -hmm. who reads off the question and then you're like, well, mm -hmm. the three ways that I don't know, scale your real estate agency, blah, I like all that. You, yeah. you like that kind of vibe with it, like a set of questions pre-selected? I do from what I found is that is the most efficient uh, input to output ratio, yeah. meaning you can film a two hour mock podcast with preset questions that you yes. prepare and that two hours turns into 80 unique videos, yes. you know, 90 unique videos. Yep. And that's enough. 90 videos um, uh, per month is three videos per day. Yeah. So that two hour session can be enough to post three times per day yeah. for an entire month on yeah. an account. So it's really, really efficient. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be in person either. You can also do this if you have like a studio set up with your, um, at just wherever you work. Mm -hmm. And then you can have someone over Zoom or Riverside or StreamYard, or there's a lot of softwares yeah. 
and then you just have that file extracted. Yeah. Um, and it's not even showing the Riverside's person who's interviewed. Good. I've used it. Better, don't use Zoom. It degrades don't use Zoom. the it, damn. It stops at 720, yeah. no matter how good your production oh, quality what's is. What's wrong with Zoom? I'm like, Zoom, yeah. you have one job to do. That's well, not allow competitors like Riverside. Like I'm like, why can't you have 4K? Just make people pay. Right. Or maybe not 4K, but, you know. I know. Higher yeah. HD quality. Yeah. If you're doing yeah. virtual con uh, like virtual video content that yeah. you want to be posted to your socials, use Riverside or StreamYard for yeah. the top two for yeah. having like the production quality that's not the Or creative. if you really want to do, you send a camera. I've done this, send a cameraman yeah. in the uh -huh. city where they're at set up because the audio is important. You yeah. got to, people forget like you can have great streaming and then if the audio, if the guy's in an echoey room mm -hmm. or something, you need curtains like this, you need carpets and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So sw switching subjects for a second. So, you know, my opinion on here's the thing: going viral is you you are on a teeter totter between debasing yourself. Okay. I see people just doing stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's gonna go viral, but yeah. you're destroying your brand. You're not, right. especially if you're in the business space, you need to have some respect. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I want to get your opinion on controversy factor. You need to have yep. some controversy, but if you're just doing pranks on your wife all the time mm -hmm. and you're getting 10 million views, that means not, you can't monetize that right. except through trying to get paid from YouTube, Facebook, which is mm -hmm. all those are going down in payouts. Yep. So the hardest part, I think, especially if you're in any kind of entrepreneur space, want to be a coach and go viral, do a training course, do high ticket stuff. It's like, because stupid stuff goes viral easier. Mm -hmm. Pranks go viral. Yep. People fall and goes viral. Craziness, crazy dances, sexual stuff goes more viral. So you really, I think that somebody watching who's in the business space, like don't only talk about business because mm -hmm. it's more boring. Like one of my most recent viral pieces of content i was on a podcast and he asked me what i think the healthiest drink is yep. and i said tequila uh -huh. i mean this i would have never guessed it got like 10 million views or something on insta but more importantly it got 235,000 shares which is a yeah. lot of shares right and i wasn't talking about business mm -hmm. so that's what it comes back to like variety mm -hmm. to not debase yourself and do just complete shenanigans you just need to open up and talk a little bit about politics talk i mean you want to go viral in your business influencer this is what pbd pat bet david yep. mm -hmm. he, i had him on my podcast you know before people really were following him and and he now talks a ton about politics right which is good more likely to go viral but he doesn't debase himself because he comes off now what he does do is make a whole subset of america not like him because he's mm -hmm. more republic he's more conservative right so you're always walking that controversy yeah. line. Polarization. Polarization, mm -hmm. controversy. In my humps formula, I have another formula called trade. The best business model, you gotta trade up your business model. And the D in trade needs to be sell in an arena that's subject to debate. Mm. Debatable, mm -hmm. polarizing, yeah. controversial. But I always say you don't wanna be contra con controversial. Like Donald Trump's controversial mm -hmm. and you end up with 81 indictments. Right. When you're too controversial, people go nuts. Right. The best is like, there's a guy that's like a vegan dude. I forget his name. He says stuff. I saw one of the biohacker guys being like, great health is drink your own urine. Okay. Mm. So that's not controversial. Like somebody's going to try to get 81 indictments on them, like politics. Right. Mm. But it is debatable. And if you see the comments, people are like, Hell no, drinking your own urine is horrible for you. And this guy's mm -hmm. like, here's the science. And so there's a fine line between deba debatable in a good way and controversial in a way that makes people like, you need you need security. Yep. It's more of a net negative than a net yeah. positive. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack there. I, I want to, like, on the first part that you brought up of going viral, that's something that we talk about a lot because we do go viral a lot with yeah. our clients. Like we just did under uh, or right over 500 million views last month with our clients. Our goal is to be at a billion uh, per month by June of this year. And then we'll okay. go to two and then five, then 10. Um, but it doesn't matter about how many views you get as much as the views being the right people. Yes. Right? And so a big part of what we focus on is you want to create content that speaks to your client, client avatar that gets you the right views. Yes, right? exactly. Because you don't, 
most, especially in the business space, you're not here for vanity metrics of yes. creating the content. And just a lot are. Get, uh, you're not supposed to be, but a lot of people, a lot of people become entrepreneurs because they want status. But yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, even so, you also want it to lead to more top line, more bottom line, yeah. just more profit in general, uh, especially if this is going to be something that's sustainable. You put more resources into it, do it long term. And so you need to speak to your buyers. You need to speak to client avatars, but it doesn't have to just be business, right? Yeah. Like know their demographics. Are they are they married? Are they single? Like what does their lifestyle look like out of the business? And you can talk on those components as well. Mm -hmm. And that has uh, a wider market of people of interest right. versus if you're talking about you know, taking your conversion rate opt-in percentage from 20 to 40% on right. your funnels, like such a small subset of people yes. care about that, but it can still move the needle for your business for the views that you do get from that content. And then if you also blend in other content with your views on relationships or just your views on business in general, yeah. so on and so forth, you'll get a more broad reach. Yeah. Um, someone who is now becoming one of the top names in the business space as well as Hermosi. Mm -hmm. And so I'll use him as an example. He talks about business content in general, and it's just, that's the umbrella of yeah. business. That's already a big market versus yeah. only talking to what used to be gym owners for him. Correct. So that allowed him to blow up on socials and have a, a much wider market that his content is being served to. But if you look at it, also a lot of the top performing content is uh, his views on relationships mm -hmm. and talking about his marriage with Layla, his wife, and uh, philosophy. And then he's had videos go viral about like eating at Chipotle and Yes. Uh, other components that makes him a multifaceted brand, right? Yeah. And so uh, I do think that there is a big use case and argument to add in more of those pillars to yes. your brand and the content you create, but you still want it to be valuable to your client avatar. That's right. Because if you are talking about other things that are just completely unrelated, then your engagement is going to drop. Yeah. And you're not going to be attracting the right people that you want. Or you have to, you can change your avatar. Like some right. people, like I said, mm -hmm. PBD. Let's say he trained his avatar, Ben Shapiro over time, you know, moved all over and his mm. avatar used to be more this and now it's changing. So it changes, which can be good or bad. You can expand it. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump used to be people watching him on The Apprentice and he expanded his avatar into all voters in 330 million person United States. Yeah. But you got to do that carefully because there's a transition period when you're like I've changed my brand multiple times mm -hmm. because I'm more of an experimenter. I'm I'm a little bit harder for I never cared as much about the vanity metrics. You know, when I was the fastest growing Instagram in the world or in America, I turned it off after a couple months because mm -hmm. eh, there's more money, more problems, but also more followers, more problems. I've had people go to prison, stalkers, you know, mm -hmm. I had armed guards for two years, Navy SEAL guy, and attack, <laughs> attack dogs and people still broke in. So, but, but more importantly, someone like me who's experimenting, I talked about books was a strong niche for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I switched into like, people perceive me as like a Lamborghini guy. And then mm -hmm. a couple years later, I was pushing SMMA, social media marketing agency, which was a huge viral, launched half the people you see now <laughs> on social media. Including myself. Were you in there yeah. too? Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Yeah, and but I've learned there's a dip in between mm. where your engagement goes down. That means you're changing your audience. Right. And and a lot of people will freak out there. And as long as you know it's coming, and I, you know, I've switched I I buy businesses now and now I'm coming back. I let my social my personal brand kind of go dormant for three years. Now I'm bringing it back. It brings back a slight, I post a little more on my farm now. Mm -hmm. So now I get people who are like, oh, I didn't like your Lamborghini content, right? but I like your you know, farm. But though, here's, a, here's something that people need to understand. The one problem with views and comments, okay, is that when you look, I'm a big psychology guy. That's actually mm -hmm. my main interest in life in business and so there's something called ssg which is a self-selected group people who comment for example are higher dark triad people so these are people higher in narcissism machiavellianism psychopathy people higher in anxiety more introverts so the whole game of social media is already only a subset of earth like you cannot capture the whole earth because Extroverts, people who are outside, people who are more mentally stable, people who are older, they're yeah. not even on social. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So you got to be very careful. If you want to be the most viral person in the world, for example, you have to appeal to, to a lot of nut jobs. Yep. So That's one of the things I tell people is don't, there's always, just like there's always someone richer, there's always somebody getting more likes and comments per post. Mm -hmm. I like what you were saying earlier. I agree. It's like, well, if your goal is making money, track the top line moolah. Right. Because you, I, can, I know exactly how to get 10 times more likes and more comments. Mm -hmm. You got to go to younger people, mm -hmm. but they have less money. Yep. You got to go to whack job. Like if I post conspiracy theory stuff, people go crazy. Mm -hmm. If I post for introverts, my, I mean, I know a guaranteed banger for me to put out is stop being so introverted, get out. Well, guess what? Why does it get more comments? Because extroverts don't need to hear that and extroverts don't comment much. Mm. So there's a whole self-selected group thing. So keep the eye on the ball of why you want to grow your social. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and, and be honest with yourself. Many people want vanity status. And there's nothing wrong. I think it's genetic. So I, I don't know if you saw my 12 types quiz. Have you taken the four M's of motivation? I have. It's been a little bit. So I don't remember. Yeah. What so the four were. M's are the four underlying unconscious motivators of humans. So the first one is material slash money. Mm -hmm. There are people literally that get dopamine releases by buying new jewelry and things like this. They, they really like things. Mm -hmm. The second one is mating romance. A lot of people, women more than men, are very motivated by family, children, mm -hmm. sex, love, romance, okay? Mm -hmm. As a little kid, I remember saying, Mom, how come every song is about love? And my mom goes, well, that's because it's important to a lot of people. And I didn't understand <laughs> that as a six-year-old, but now I realize mating romance is, is a very, I mean, Dr. David Buss says everything's mating. But third one is movement freedom. Mm. Now, that's my strongest. For those of you listening, if your strongest is movement freedom, you want to make money, you want to grow your social so you have more free time, you can travel the world, no boss, do your own thing, have your own schedule, buy your own farm, like whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that have to be careful they don't get stuck on vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one, though, if you're the fourth, which is mastery slash status, you love fame. I, I get a kick. I was watching. Who was I watching? The, I somehow got on some Instagram. The algorithm. I must have liked once like a paparazzi account. Okay. So now I see every day I get one or two posts. It's like Morgan Freeman walking out of a building, mm -hmm. like a restaurant, like Morgan. Uh -huh. And then it shows Matt McConaughey. And there was Denzel. And it's funny. All three of those dudes act like they don't like fame. Mm. Oh, I know A-list actors now. I know billionaires. You don't become an A-list actor if you don't love that mastery status. Right. Right. So just admit it. If you're a dude who's like, no, I like vanity metrics, mm -hmm. all life's vanity. So if somebody says that's vain, you can be like, everything's vanity, brother. <laughs> we all die in the end. You can be nihilistic. So I do think there's a subset of people that should tweak their... And I, I won't say names, but I've watched people who changed our message and I know why. They went downstream into the conspiracy world mm. because who do you think is the most introverted, young, and likely to like and comment and engage? You talk about flat earth? Oh yeah. That's uh -huh. a bunch of people that are mentally unstable, not mm -hmm. all of them. They're gonna be more higher on neurosis, lower on emotional stability. They're gonna be younger and they're going to be more introverts. Yeah, and it's also more polarizing going back to yeah, that but I'm saying even if the, if it was polarizing to seventy year olds, mm -hmm. so pick a subject that's like I'll give you an example. Okay, what's polarizing to seven year olds? Social Security retirement age. Mm -hmm. It'll never go viral because seventy year olds don't care and don't even. My mom's seventy, and she's just finding out about Facebook. She's like, I like this new Facebook thing. I can look at videos. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, this is twenty one years old. So. It's not even controversy. It's also, if you want a ton of views, you got to trend a little younger and a little wackier. I would say yeah. yes, but it depends on the young age, right? Because when you're looking at the age demographics on platforms, yeah. really, I would say in the 50s leading up to 60s, there's less, but like 50 and below, everyone's on social media. Yeah, but they don't engage Everyone. as much. Yeah, yeah. Unless the, the you older go into politics. 40-year-olds will engage, but not 70-year-olds. Right. But, My grandma probably never let a, left a comment. She sent a text mm -hmm. once. She sent, hi. She was 102. I'm like, that's pretty good. <laughs> that yeah. was her total engagement from 1918 to 2020. 
Hi. <laughs> it has changed a bit though to where comments don't have as much weight as they used to of that okay. being like the main metric. There's so much more that goes into it, such as watch time, yeah, watch the retention, time. like rewatch. Shares, too, shares right? are huge. You shares think rewatch huge. matters when it just loops now? Because they, they change that. Things you well, used to not loop. Uh-huh. It's uh it rewatches just make more watch time on yeah. the post. So it's really watch time. So you think watch retention. time is the most important. So keeping it, engaging it plays all a huge the way factor. through. There are some like we see it, uh it's not all the time, but we see it happen still fairly frequently of posts will go viral and they don't have a lot of comments, but it has, you know, yes. still a million views. Yeah, they um, change the algorithm. Instagram does yeah. that a lot now. Right. You'll see stuff with 60,000 likes. Mm -hmm. I think likes still play in. They all play factors. But I think likes more than comments. Because I've seen things that have 60,000 likes now mm -hmm. and like 150 comments. When it comes to short form video, I really believe retention and total watch time is, is playing some one. of the biggest yeah. factors. Shareability is a huge piece of it yeah. too. But Instagram and Facebook... They have an actual article that tells exactly how the art, the algorithm works. Okay. But you think they're telling the truth? Well, I, I, I think feel like people. I feel like I Instagram so. will change on a heartbeat. That's true. I mean, I'm sure they're testing. They don't so want to be hacked. So many engineers. They don't want algo hacking where mm -hmm. people like SEO hacking. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But um, so, what else do you think is important? So, watch time, total watch time. Mm -hmm. What do you What do you think would be second? What's your guess? Shareability. Asking the question, like, is this something that you'd want to share with yes. a friend, like someone else? You know, if, if it's a shareable piece of content, yeah. the likelihood of it doing really well, going yes. viral is high. One of my mentors is, is a professor of marketing. He wrote a book, Contagious, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Jonah Berger. And he put in the seven steps he analyzed across centuries, not just social media, what goes viral. Certain topics go viral. For example... 100 years ago, a newspaper article about a mom and dad being separated from their children in military, the dad leaves, comes back. That would be a big article in a newspaper. Mm. Still, I posted an Instagram reel, a uh, short, maybe a year or two ago. This thing got 130 million views. It was a mom coming home yeah. from the military after like years or a year okay. of seeing her little baby. Mm -hmm. So that's a recurring theme in the human brain, scandals. Okay, yeah. murder scandals. They were going viral in the 1500s. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of his things is, is this something that I'm comfortable sharing with other people? That is mm -hmm. a component of vir virality. So he probably, I would guess he consulted to the big, big three social people. One thing though, I'll tell you a weird trend that you got to be careful. TikTok's the craft, craftiest. They know how to trick people. Mm -hmm. They give every man, you know what TikTok, this is my theory on TikTok. They let everybody be famous for a day so you'd switch off Instagram. So people who are posting Instagram to 5,000 followers get three views. Then they'd post the same thing on TikTok. And TikTok, the Chinese algo would just, you get a million views once. And then people, they're pinning <laughs> that to the top uh -huh. and they're chasing that million again. They're making better. But I look at, I mean, TikTok, I know, I, I, I also believe TikTok is also counting likes from alien species there ain't that many humans <laughs> tiktok it'd be like yo give this dude an extra they're they're they're, they're like giving it out like heroin I know crack okay like yo topic. bro give this dude ten thousand. he gonna give him ten thousand likes because humans are so it's an actual dopamine addiction right. to get likes right but i was looking at one of my most viral tiktoks and i went deep in the analytics and it was like seven percent america mm -hmm. so i was like this is a bs post this doesn't help me mm-hmm it was in non-buyer, people who don't buy my stuff. Yep. So now, when TikTok lets you go viral, I now I had something else go viral uh, a couple of days ago, and it was 80% America. And I was like, yes. Yep, that's what you want. But it wasn't as viral. Views. It got like a million views. The other one got like 10. I'm like, give me a million views, 80% right. in my buyer customer countries. Mm -hmm. I don't get Botswana. I don't get a lot of Botswanans. Mm -hmm. No offense to Botswana or Nepalese people, you know, yeah. <laughs> Laotian people. Great, but TikTok's very international. Wh which platform, if you could only be on one platform, that's it. Mm -hmm. Which one would you choose as your one stop fits all for you? For me, Instagram. Okay. Yeah, see, Instagram. See, I, I, I thought that I. I think YouTube is the most powerful platform, with one exception. They don't have stories. Mm -hmm. It's the oversight of the century. 
Stories are very powerful to building your personal brand because you can show behind the scene, it can be unedited, you don't, you can just post your life mm -hmm. and people really connect with you. But YouTube has every age. Like yep. Warren Buffett says he watches YouTube. Right. And he's 95. And you got five-year-olds on YouTube. You have the biggest influencers like the Mr. Beast are dominating there. I made a ton of money. They have a good ad platform. Yep. Harder to use than Insta. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you crack it, it can, oh, the YouTube scalability behind it. Yeah. But really I would strong. say, I, I would say YouTube is like 1% yeah. better, but they're I, both strong. I agree with you. You, you asked for me specifically, yeah. which is why I said Instagram, that's yeah. my strongest platform. And there's like, I think mini chat is one of the, this, it's just a huge opportunity. Right. The automation right of DMs. Yeah. 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 You, the comment CTA story yes. CTA. That's the other but, thing. They got DMs, right. YouTube DM system. Mm -hmm. it, was built i'm like who built this who'd you get to build it did yeah. you go find the dumbest motherfucker in the world to build a youtube they, they used to have an inbox i don't even know if it's there anymore i don't believe it, it was the There's worst like comments and then you have a channel email but as Dude, far as they used messages. to have dms on youtube I, I don't understand google sometimes you're the richest company why don't you just copy like TikTok just basically, uh, and Mark Zuckerberg just copied Snapchat for stories. I'm like, why doesn't YouTube have stories mm -hmm. and a DM inbox that many chat could plug into? Then you almost don't. If you're starting from scratch, I would tell people, I tell people to start from scratch, do YouTube. The one thing YouTube has is long form content and exactly. people are ready for it. Mm -hmm. I post my long form content, but people aren't ready. When you're scrolling through reels, mm -hmm. you're not turning. Basically, if people don't turn their phone this way, they're not ready for long content. Mm -hmm. Nobody's watching vertical long content, really. I mean, maybe on YouTube's app, but not mm -hmm. much. People, they like that horizontal, man. It's mm -hmm. a psychology thing. Yeah, and YouTube, I mean, long form, it goes back to retention and watch time, right? But also just just normal psychology behaviors. The more time you spend with someone, yep. the more you trust them, the more of a relationship yes. you have. And when it comes to the business standpoint, the more likely they are to buy. So yes. that's why I, I look at short form content right now is the biggest opportunity to create as much top of funnel reach, yep. brand awareness, exposure, and then let's funnel that down yes. to long form if you have it is incredible uh, yeah. for converting into customers as well as any other resources you have. Um, I think with, not I think, but what we've realized from all of our client accounts is from a call to action perspective, you want to have incredibly free, uh, valuable lead magnets yep. as like your primary call to actions that you're posting out on socials. Yeah, it's DM free me for and then, an ebook, the yeah, 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 a PDF, and mind it, free map. stuff. And then the free stuff, it you want it to provide an insane amount of value in a short amount of time yes. without a huge uh, level of also input from them and effort that goes into it. And a lot of people are so afraid to give away their best stuff. Yes. I'm like, just give away your best stuff yes. for free and watch what happens, watch yeah. you make more money. It's just, because yeah. if, if you give away your best stuff for free, people go through that, they automatically assume it's like, wow, if this is for free, I can't imagine what the page yeah. is for, right? And that's and, evolved. It, it, that was a, kind of the Gary Vee model was really the guy pioneering free content. I think he was out 08, 09, and he had his books that you bought, but he put out a mm -hmm. lot of really, he's kind of the king, the first pioneer of give your best stuff away on social. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also volume. He's yeah, he was a high volume, volume like guy. Content machine for a long time. Yeah. He Just never, he didn't have so much out. of the sub account concept. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a content. I think Joe Rogan really began that with the JRE clips, mm -hmm. you know. Now, I think, let me ask you. So let's say we rank YouTube, Instagram, number tied for number one. Okay. What's number two and three? What platform? You like X? You like Snap? Yeah, like, you know, LinkedIn, you like, oh, like what? Let's assume somebody watching is more in the entrepreneur space. In the entrepreneur space. Yeah. It also depends on the industry. Yeah, but let's say, let's say coaches. Coaches. Let's say coaches, e-com people, mm -hmm. agency people, people who follow me. What do, you, what do you think? I would say, so LinkedIn or Twitter, X, Yeah, it's different. Like we yeah. don't see nearly as much success with short form content okay. as we do on the other five platforms I listed, yeah. which is why it's not part of that five. Um, you think that's changing though? We're constantly testing it and yeah. we've seen mixed results. So Elon has talked about in interviews, they're playing around with the idea of pushing more video, maybe having a Reels tab that they release on the platform. Yeah. But still current day, 
we see mixed results and it's not very predictable or consistent of short form doing well. And yeah. if we create accounts and we're only posting short form content, what performs best uh, that we're seeing is when you at least have a mix of text-based content yeah, for sure. and video content yes. on X. I've tried pure uh, video. Uh -huh. hey, yeah. Twitter's still, X is still kind of Twitter. Tweets mm -hmm. in general yeah. crush. Yeah. You, you don't see, same with Snap. Like Snap, I look at the reels. They're not getting the level of a TikTok or Insta reels or even mm -hmm. YouTube. Snap is yeah. still very much people snap each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the ultimate use case for the platform. Snap, though. So the, the reels on Snapchat is called Spotlight. Yeah, the Spotlight. The yeah. Spotlight yeah. Uh, tab. It's growing. It's growing. It's, it's growing. And yeah. Snapchat's underrated. It has over 400 million daily active yeah. users. I told you. Over 750 5% of the world yeah. uses it daily. Yeah. But I like Snap for my story because I have about a, yeah. a, almost a million. Dude, I remember on Snap, I remember posting my first Snap story. I post like 50 Snaps. One time I got 18 million views on my first one. Insane. 12 million. I was at the Super Bowl. I think I got, I, they used to push me out to the global audience because mm -hmm. I was one of the only, that's why it pays to be early. Mm -hmm. yep. So I, I raced to a million. So even now, sometimes my Snap story does better than my Insta story. Mm. Spot, How many followers do you have on Snap? I got like 800 and almost a mil. I okay. had a million at some point, but I stopped posting for like four years. Yeah. And I just got back to it, and sometimes my Snap beat Insta stories, but Snap doesn't throttle you as much. Mm. Instagram, I got 2.7 million followers, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll get less story views than an 800,000 Snap. Mm -hmm. I like that about Snap. But yeah. Snap is better for younger. If you're trying to sell to 50-year-olds, right. you don't need yep. any. You don't even need a Snapchat account. F 50, the 50s age demographic is the fastest growing demographic yes. on snapchat but it's still small it's yeah like, well fast because they went from eight right dudes yeah, exactly in a nursing home they got one more nursing home to do it now they got 16 people over 65 on there and they, yeah but even um, 40s is on snap 18 to 24 is last i checked 39 percent of that platform which is you yeah know, people have aged into the 30s because uh -huh. it, it, it's from 2016 so it's eight nine years old so people were using that when they're 21, now they're 30. Yeah, 55% of Snapchat is ages 25 and up, most yeah. of them being 25 to 45, yeah. which is still over 200 million yes. daily users, and they have over 750 million monthly active It's users. more women, though. Snap is a strong with women. Like, I live in Sweden. People use Snap there like we use iMessage or WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. They don't use iMessage or WhatsApp in Scandinavia. They snap each other or... We, they also use Facebook Messenger. So what's your mm -hmm. take? Because ManyChat can also do. Do you think Facebook as a platform, not Instagram, is underrated? Yeah, it's underrated. It's uh, Facebook has been finicky. We've seen in the, the last year, like 2023, leading into 2024, of we were crushing it with Reels earlier okay. in 2023. Then we saw a big dip. And now we're seeing a pick up again. Pick it up. So yeah. they were like tweaking some things on because we huh. saw it across the board and we tested out a lot of experimenting, different variables. And it's just like across the board, everything went down uh, for around when, summer when, months. What months was that? In the that, summer? Yeah, that was around June ish uh, leading into like September, October of 2023. We saw dips. And this is with our newer secondary accounts. Um, the newer so, ones. So the yeah. old entrenched ones were still doing well. Yeah, it kind of mixed bag. Some, some yes, some no. Uh, but overall, Facebook, they are, they can be a strong AdSense platform. So yeah. I've uh, connected with people. They're not selling anything. They're just getting AdSense and crushing it on Facebook, doing Facebook Lives, things along those lines. Uh, Facebook is the most versatile platform. You know, you have all different features. You can do text posts, like pictures, videos, reels, the long, long videos. You can have Facebook groups and marketplace. Yeah. Like there's so many features to it. Um, and not a lot of people in the coaching business space, like talk about it and yeah. focus on it. Um, most people, if they are posting on Facebook is because they're posting on Instagram and then they toggle post on Facebook as yes. well, right? They, they have the integration. That's what I do so sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah. Do you think that's okay? Yeah. I mean, it's better than not doing it. But yeah. I mean, do you think it's better to natively post into Facebook versus the share? 
Um, we have actually been testing around with that and yeah. like posting in the native platform versus business manager yeah. versus doing the share. I think what matters most is being active on the platform. Yes. So if you're still, if you're doing it with the share, but you're still going to Facebook and engaging yes. and being that's active. the problem when you do sometimes. Right. So right. when I like, when I post to Insta, I like to post three or four preceded comments. I'll post uh -huh. right I, after. Yeah. Cause I Smart. know it'll grab mm -hmm. some attention, but they don't auto shoot them over to your Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure you go over to Facebook yeah. and start engaging. That's mm -hmm. that's a weakness of ours. What, what do you think about LinkedIn? That's LinkedIn. probably my weakest platform. It can be strong. Yeah. Um, real estate space, LinkedIn is really strong. I know a lot of people that do But is well the there. short form strategies working? You don't do fan mm -hmm. accounts in LinkedIn, do you? You're yeah. Like best you can, of Ty Lopez link, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is like they're extremely verification based, you know, yes. people on the accounts there, like they have a lot of parameters of not doing secondaries. Yes. Um, and we do post short form video that can, they do average, but we don't right. have a lot of content going viral on LinkedIn, yeah. um, but it still can it's help. It's higher quality it can views help. though in the yeah, business. Space. Right. Right. And it can help your account still, you know, build an audience, but yeah. it's not going to be generating tens, hundred million views yeah. per month, like other platforms will with short form content. I also have connected with quite a few people. Um, so a, a lot of people come to us who have bigger followings on X and LinkedIn because yeah. they're text-based guys. They're yes. like copy, it's all text-based. So LinkedIn is another platform to where most people I've met who have a big yes. following there, they're especially doing long form yes. copy text-based content. Yeah, text, it's readers that's what it really takes there. off. There's readers. Yeah. yeah. Now, what do you think, so the two, the big one we haven't really gone deep into is TikTok. Do mm -hmm. you see, TikTok, so we said, you know, let's say we say Insta and YouTube is number one. Do you think for most people, TikTok's the close second to, to Insta, YouTube? Behind, so really like- Or would you put it up there ahead of those, Insta and YouTube? If you're an e-com, I would put it up there ahead. Because the TikTok, TikTok shop is, yeah. is crushing right yeah. now. It's like, but so that many may people, not last forever. Right, They're it's subsidizing yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, so many platforms do the snap and then you're gone yeah. overnight. So I know a lot of people that are building their entire business on TikTok shop. I'm like, nah, you know, man. Just people be, haven't be ready been around to pivot. the game. Yeah. I, be ready I, to pivot. I started my first brand in 09. Uh -huh. I found the video with Zach, my buddy. Sadly, he died and uh, recently of cancer. Mm. But. Back in 09, there's a video. I just saw it. I might came up on my phone. Like, you know how iPhone does the reminders? Yeah. And it's like, back in 2009. And I, I don't even remember this video. I was going, we're at the Laugh Factory Comedy mm -hmm. Club. And I'm like, yo, Zach, I'm shooting a video of you. And right now, there's this new thing called YouTube app. Because apps were new. Uh-huh, yeah. Nobody, in 2009. There, Instagram right. came out in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I, there was, Twitter, I think, had an app then. But there was a YouTube and I was like, yo, there's a new thing and I'm uploading this video of you right now. And he's like, huh? <laughs> and so that's how I know I really started. I, I always thought I started my personal brand in 2010, but it was really 09. Mm. And I've seen stuff and come and go. So anybody listening, you're a newbie to this game if you're building around one platform. Right. Don't trust Zuckerberg. <laughs> Don't trust right. just YouTube, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Don't just trust LinkedIn. You want to be cross-platform. I've seen weird stuff happen on every platform. And people build their, and build your email list. Mm -hmm. And yep. if you do a many chat drive, people build your list, build an yep. SMS list. I have my own Ty Lopez app, which mm -hmm. I control. Mm -hmm. But I also have people in case you get kicked out of the Apple store, you know? Mm -hmm. So the wise man in business never fully trusts one platform. Yeah. I'll tell you that yeah. right now. Right. You don't want to be beholden to some dudes being like, no, oh, I don't like that account. Yeah. Yeah. Overnight, you know? your business model's gone. Yeah, you should be on every switch. account. Yeah. And, and people need, if you're making money, don't be cheap. Build out a social team. Mm -hmm. I divide my companies into 14 divisions. You know, I've had small businesses, I remember building a business that did, you know, 100 grand a year, did a business, did a million. I've done 10 million in year 50, 100. I've done 700, 800 million in one year in revenue. And as you scale bigger, you have to get more organized. So mm -hmm. I have the 14 divisions of business. And I think mm -hmm. it, I haven't found any, I found that's the best number of divisions. Division five is, I call it, Put a uh, pull social media marketing because you're pulling people to you. Mm -hmm. People call that organic, yeah. but really, and then division six is push paid ads. That's where you push your message mm -hmm. and you ram it down people's throat. And then division seven is direct sales, phone team, 
-hmm. one-on-one belly-to-belly sales. But Division 5 is the beginning of it all. And never you need to build a team around Division 5. If you're making a million bucks a year, you should have at least one full-time social media person plus probably an agency. Mm -hmm. Like I work with agencies like you. I like that too. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. because your in-house team will be good at some stuff. But so once you start making more than a million, you need to have a real budget every mm-hmm. month because the game's gotten elevated. Mm-hmm. You know, people, these guys like Mr. Beast, they spend a million dollars on one video or more. Mm-hmm. And so people, entrepreneurs don't understand why they aren't don't grow. And I'm like, well, are you cheap? Because the first rule of business is. It's not about saving money. It's about only deploying money that brings back more than you put in. That's right. called investing. Right. So if you do social media right, it pays back. I, yeah, I used to major do- Major asset. I used to do YouTube. I was the only person in the world doing YouTube brand paid ads. So that means I was boosting a video on YouTube mm-hmm. that had no call to action, except mm-hmm. maybe subscribe. Okay. And I was dropping like 500,000 a month. Mm. And people are like, oh, that's crazy. I'm like, okay, so 500,000 a month, that's six mil a year. I made for sure back an extra 15 million from that. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm like, wait, no, you're the crazy one. Right. You could turn 500, you know, six million into 15 million, Mm -hmm. but you're cheap. No, I would be like, you're just fear based, weak. You have a return on capital. Yeah. So as long as, like, you should build out awareness campaigns, short forms, top of the funnel stuff, Mm -hmm. unless you're a bad business person or you're new and you don't know how to monetize it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what do you do with somebody who doesn't know how to monetize? Uh, well, the first question is, do you have an offer to sell? Right. You, a lot of people have don't. Something? Yeah. yeah. So if you don't have that, have something to sell, you know, yeah. but do you we, ever help people put together their products? Yeah. Oh yeah. So we have really two pillars to our company. We have our done for you service side and then yes. we have done with you coaching. So, By the way, let me interrupt you. For those of you who are interested mm-hmm. in working you know, with the agency, what's your best Instagram to send you a DM? Yeah, uh, Instagram is Logan Forsyth, yeah. F-O-R-S-Y-T-H. Um, and then I actually made an exclusive link for the listeners of this episode okay. at mediascaling.com okay. forward slash tie. Okay. And that'll get you access to our 2 billion view secrets program for free. Okay. We have hundreds of our hook frameworks. We yes. have uh, our content schedulers. Like I, I said, give away your best stuff for free. Yes. We've done that. Like it's, it's incredible content. Um, it's fast paced. You go through it, you're going to get results. And then I added an additional bonus for that link okay. of, uh, a podcast training, uh, of how to set up a podcast consistently get on as a guest to other big podcasts, which can really move the needle for you yes. and your brand. Um, just like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, and then also if you have a podcast, how to use that to get on guests consistently. Um, so yeah. and I'll also put a backup link that will forward to the same place. Tylopez.com slash Logan F. There you go. Logan, mm-hmm. L-O-G-A-N, F like Frank. If you go there, it'll redirect to his media scaling website. Mm-hmm. And we'll put that link in the description, tylopez.com slash Logan F. Get the free stuff. That's good because like you said, you put together a good, I call it mind maps. Just kind of maps out. You know, I would say making money is like finding a treasure. Mm-hmm. And it's a hell of a lot easier to find a treasure if you have a map. So this is a right. money map. So yep. yeah, go check that out. So anyway, go back to what you were saying. I just want to remind people because we're an hour in. I'm, yep. I want to make sure people can take away because sometimes people wa- listen to a podcast like this and they're like, going, I can't remember it all. Uh-huh. So it's like you got like a PDF with it all laid out. Yeah, not yeah. just PDF. It's training materials. We have tools in there. It's it's good stuff. Uh, but we have so the done for you side, the done with you side. Yes. Done with you is coaching based. So that is for people. The whole concept is to teach you and give you the systems to where three to six or three to 10 hours of filming per month turns into 840 posts per month and you're omnipresent yes. across platforms. Yes. Uh, that applies to your main socials. And we have uh, production training in there, which is creating the content and then editing and distribution uh, as a business owner or just really the creator. You should be doing the production. You should not do the editing. You should not do the distribution. Yeah. So we give you our, uh, syst- our recruitment systems to go out and outsource and recruit that yourself. Yeah. And then we provide our own internal trainings for editing, for distrib- for all the account management, creating the accounts. Um, and then our managers will provide ongoing training to, to their teams okay. uh, on the coaching side. And then we provide coaching to the actual member who joins. Um, so we have a lot of monetization training. The big part of that is improving your offer. That's yeah. a huge step one, yep. right? And then different monetization What's tactics, the main thing so. people don't do well with their offer, you think? Don't have a guarantee. 
Yeah, that's the biggest mistake I see. And there there are some offers out there to where you should have an anti-guarantee. It doesn't yeah. make sense for every offer, yeah. but 98% of them, it yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. And when you have a guarantee, it de-risk it for the other yep. party. It shows confidence. Like people want the result more than they yes. care about the money, right? Yeah. That's why they're giving it to you in the first place. And I've connected with countless people um, who have gone from making like 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 a month with no guarantee to their offer. They won't do anything else except add a guarantee on there. Yeah. And then it just can 2X, 5X yeah. their business. Like yeah, I always, I, I added a guarantee in a product back in like 08. And I have a buddy who was like one of the, you know, some people say I'm the OG. I know some OGs that have been doing it even longer than me. And um, he was like, listen, Ty, you put a guarantee, mm -hmm. your refund rate goes up from sure 3% to 6%. Mm -hmm. But your conversion rate goes up double. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. you want to go forward six steps and back one? Mm -hmm. Or you just want to go forward one step with zero back? He's like, don't, you know, people, don't be an idiot. It's like yeah. Charlie Munger's framework. How to get rich. Uh, find out what will make you poor and never do those things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, yeah. AKA, don't be an idiot. So what do stupid people do? You know, they don't put a refund walmart man it's like crazy like walmart you can return anything to walmart Amazon as well without a receipt at walmart mm. they were smart they were like look we're gonna get some people to take advantage of it mm -hmm. right so you go backwards one step but for people to know hassle free return to walmart i don't even have to who the hell remembers the receipts right mm -hmm. to just then they ended up well not only did they go up but sam walton became the richest man in america and his family's still in the top 15 always the walton family is one mm -hmm. of the most power if they were all unified they would be in the top three so mm -hmm. that guarantee things the old school technique he was pioneering in the 80s mm -hmm. so a lot of stuff that it's funny when i meet people like oh this guy invented this i'm like bro you don't read business <laughs> history been, like yeah. rockefeller was doing that in the 1890s yeah. and vanderbilt was doing it in the 50, 1850s mm -hmm. He was doing it in the 50s. I was talking to my grandma once and she's like, she was talking about her parents and she's like, yeah, I remember back, they were born in the 90s. I'm like, mom, I'm like, grandma, you got to specify, we're, you're talking 1890s. <laughs> so <laughs> Rock, Vanderbilt was doing this stuff in the 50s. I'm talking about the 1850s. Uh -huh. They were putting guarantees. Standard Oil was like, oh, we got the best oil. Uh, he had railroads and it's like, our railroad guarantees. Your freight will go from New York to Philadelphia in, you know, today yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, if you can put guarantee in your marketing, it just it yes. can be transformative. And so a big part of what I talk about is crafting an undeniable offer. Yes. Something that's so good, it breaks through the noise. Yep. And Irresistible it, offer, I call it. Yeah, 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 irresistible offer. And a big part of that is having a guarantee. And yeah. it doesn't need to just be, like, there's different types, right? You can have an unconditional guarantee. Yep. And that's where... There is a level, the marketplace is leaning towards more of a level of entitlement to where people mm -hmm. feel like they should be able to get all the results yes. for no work. And so... Yeah, Ty, I bought you, your course. It didn't work. Did you watch the first of the 67 videos? No, but it didn't work. <laughs> exactly, I'm like, did you think yeah. going through the credit card process, getting the email receipt, therefore you understand the 67 steps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> when you have the unconditional guarantee... That's the one that gets exercised the most, yep. but it's also the lowest risk for the consumer right. side. I recommend doing that if you have uh, lower ticket products, right. have an unconditional because it's like it doesn't add a lot of risk. Um, That's right. And usually with low ticket, you have less fulfillment costs as well. For sure. Um, or if you're just getting started and if you're a solopreneur, you don't have a team, then the risk is your time, right? Yes. But you get so much more back from that with the experience of working with clients. So if you're just getting started as an entrepreneur, you should offer, uh, not should, but it's recommended to offer an unconditional guarantee. Yeah. When you start to get into more service based, you have team involved, fulfillment costs, that can add a substantial risk to your business as yes. well, which you have to take into account. So then you can get into conditional guarantees. Yes. And the best part of doing that is when you make the conditions, the steps that people need to take to That's be right. successful with what you do, Yes. right? Because then it goes back to what was mentioned earlier. People will always, not always, but uh, for the most part, we'll take the result over the refund. And so if they yeah. take the steps they need to do in order to qualify for a refund, the likelihood of them getting the results should be high. And yeah. then when they're at that point, 
they're not going to want a refund. Yeah, they or with the result. service base, you can say, if we don't get you this result, we work for free until exactly. we get you there. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's there's levels to refunds that right. if you're doing a hundred thousand dollar product, you know, sometimes you got to be careful that you don't work for fifty thousand dollars worth of work, and then they're like, oh, by the way, <laughs> thanks for your, thank you for your service, <laughs> and you know, so yeah, you you got. When it gets higher ticket, you generally want to have a contract too mm-hmm. that you can protect yourself with. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. In general, you know, one of the big findings, people don't realize in the last 50 years, one of the big economic business findings, I think he won a Nobel Prize, uh, an economist, for the concept of risk aversion. Mm. Homo sapiens, in general, are always moving away from risk. Mm-hmm. And so, and people will trade. It's, I think it was Lenin or one of the communist, you know, founders said, uh, give someone bread, they'll give you their freedom. Ah, okay. People are like, oh, I mean, look at a nine to five job. It yep. removes risk. Right. The golden handcuffs. Yeah, it's golden yeah. handcuffs. You don't like your life, but at least uh-huh. you're not starving to death. So right. the average person is very petrified of everything. Mm-hmm. Courage is is a rare thing in the world and, and is getting, it's increasing where people are afraid of their own shadow. Mm-hmm. The irony is the real refund policy should be at the university level Right. Letting people get right. a university yeah. degree in something, A, they have no natural talent in. If you're mm-hmm. a professor, you should be like, yo, this math class ain't for you, brother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're paying 30000 a year in the U.S. for your degree. Why don't you switch over there to history or psychology or poetry? So if you really wanted it. But the government makes a lot of money on lending money oh, in yeah. America. Uh-huh. It's, one, it's actually one of the more profitable things the U.S. government does. Is lend money to college Which, to I mean, enslave their own enslave twenty year olds. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't laugh, but it's kind of it's a laugh of incre- incredulu- uh, incredulousness. Yeah, it's debt you can't get out. That's of. actually not a word, is it? Incredulity. <laughs> Incredulous is the word. Yeah, but I wanted to touch on another big part of this strategy as well is is going back to the monetization side. And then short form, again, being that top of funnel brand awareness, let's create a massive amount of reach. And then you retarget that with ads and the conversion driven content. And that works so well um, because you're building these massive custom audiences, yes. like especially across all these secondary account networks yeah. that we build for people. We're generating. Yeah, you can share the pixel back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pixel all of it, yeah. and then you can have custom audiences to yep. retarget. You can build lookalikes off of it, so on yeah. and so forth through the whole game. And uh, at one we, point, I had one of the biggest retargeting pixels ever. Like I don't YouTube. doubt. It. I yeah. freak in. It's like five percent of the world on my pixel. Yeah, that's you crazy. actually can have a pixel that's too big. Then, then it's like not mm-hmm. having a pixel again. Yeah. If too many people it's watch your like stuff. Broad yeah, it's too yeah. broad. It's uh-huh. like, so yeah. Right. But a nice laser focus pixel can just mm-hmm. print you money because you can yeah. also go off watch time now. You used to not be able to do that. Yeah. Now yeah. you can be like only people who right. watch more than X percent of mm-hmm. my video. Yep. And that's obviously a more intent, high intent buyer, you know? Yeah. And when you have call to actions and it's conversion driven, you're going to get more conversions, right? But yeah. you don't, if that is all of your organic content, it's just not going to perform as well. Yes. So we generally follow like 80, 20 rule, you know, 80, 20, uh, 80% plus be just value based. Uh, and value can be, I look at it as two pillars, entertainment value and then information value. Yep. And you can blend both together. So one of those two things, if not both. And 80% plus is just fully value based. The other 20% you can uh, sprinkle in conversions. Yes. Um, and then we also incorporate call to actions as, uh, across the content and the accounts through. You like to everything into Instagram DMs because of the many chat um, and Facebook too. You can many chat yep, Facebook. Right. Yeah. yeah. On just the meta platforms. So with many chat right now, it's just the results that we're seeing from it is insane across the yeah. board. And, uh, what? How many mini chat campaigns do you have running at any given time? Um, we're it's a newer initiative for yeah. us that we're rolling out, so we're constantly scaling it more. I'm about to start incorporating more of it to my socials and yeah. using that as a big testing ground. Um, and we also have a few of our clients set up with yeah. uh, mini chat and um, you know setting up these and, and scaling more leads, more sales for them. Um, but overall, if you do it right with scripted short form content. You should, you can still have a lot of value in that content, mm. but then uh, towards the middle or end, you can have the call to action comment the word below. Yes. And those comments, it boosts the post. Also help the engagement and, and you're engagement. triggering yeah. many chat. Right. And yeah. so you, um, there's, 
uh, it's people I've met in this space who have done, uh, a, a friend of mine recently was talking about, he had over a hundred thousand leads that he brought in huh. from mini chat on his Instagram alone in less than 30 days. Wow. Um, and it was Did he driving them into email. Um, yeah. In email. Yeah. So collecting the emails from mini chat and just free resources. Right. Yeah. And all of his content is based around value based videos, but then yes. he'll have comment the word X, Y, Z below. Yeah. And so he's still building a following. The engagement's really strong. Yeah. Um, and still he's following the 80, 20 rule, yep. but in each piece of content rather than on the total content. Right. Yeah. So it's 80% of each piece is still value based. And then, and then the, the 20% end, has in. the call yeah. to action and it still just crushes for him. I like, I, I'm, I, I told my team, I want to dominate. So you can be an emperor or a king mm -hmm. or a prince. Emperor of short form. I want to be the emperor of medium form. I, mm -hmm. The medium form space. We talk about this on another podcast maybe on our follow up one, but you know, to me, short form sub two minutes, mm -hmm. right? Cause like some platforms that's as long as you can go. Yeah. Then long form is like Ted talks. You know, I did one that say anything people can focus. Some people can focus up to 18 minutes. So to me, mediums two to 18 mil minutes, mm -hmm. Mr. Beast yeah. really dominated medium. He did a lot of 11, 12. He's going a little longer now. And then anything, mm -hmm. 18 to 60 minutes is long and then I have very long like I've had I've done six hour talks they actually mm -hmm. give you a different subset of the market right but medium is a very interesting one and now every platform obviously YouTube but now Facebook Insta, TikTok are all letting stuff go longer than two minutes yeah that's very mm -hmm. recent right I mean there's IGTV but TikTok just recently and now they're mm -hmm. encouraging I just released one released a video on whatever you do don't isolate it's like don't be too introverted. Mm. That shit crushed is like nine minutes. Dude, it crushed on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube on like that medium. So that's mm -hmm. that's like the front. There's always a frontier there too. Mm -hmm. It's like long. I call it the 13 hour rule to really have what I call a loyal customer. They need to have watched about 13 hours of your stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing yeah. a little 30 second clips, they need to watch 30 seconds times two for one minute yeah. times 60. <laughs> it's 120 yeah. times 13. Right. They got to watch a thousand mm -hmm. short clips to hit the 13 hours. But every once in a while you release a six hour, I just, I'm releasing a six hour talk. Boom. They've already watched six hours after one, yeah, one so video. I have so many people I used to fall asleep to my stuff podcast. Mm -hmm. I was with these two doctors in London in August. And the guy's like, man, me and my, we're doing, they're doing 10 million net. And they're like mm -hmm. 29. They're dentists. Wow. Young Dennis and they're like, dude, we're gonna tell him we fell asleep listening to your podcast. I used to do three, four hour talks. I know your ads used to be like three, four hour ads that. on YouTube. I yeah. dude, I yeah. can crush with a medium. Like I see people trying to do what I did. If you can talk medium length, like two to ten minutes, there's no competition. Mm. Most people can't handle that two to ten minute space to yeah. be really punchy. Like some people can do super long because mm. they just babble. Mm -hmm. And some people can do super short because you can edit it. Yeah. But like two to 18 minutes is a different skill set. It's a, mm -hmm. probably a different neural part of the brain. So some people can do it. You can cut down. One thing in simple ways, do the same thing. Cut your long form mm -hmm. two hour podcast, but grab like tell your editors, look for like eight minute pieces. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love because I can hit with medium. It's a little bit of the best of the short form. Like mm -hmm. if I release a four minute here, in my garage was three minutes and 59 seconds. That mm -hmm. was I that was medium mm -hmm. and it went to an hour and 15 lander. So okay. that was long. That was mm -hmm. extra long. Anything over an hour I consider. So I've messed with medium to extra long is pretty powerful on a, on a direct response VSL base. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, I mean, like Dave Ramsey, Ramsey yeah. Solutions. They yeah. have a clips channel just yes. for their show and it has a bigger following than their main channel yeah. does. I see a lot of uh, Joe Rogan's like that. Right? Dude, I've never uh -huh. watched a full Joe Rogan. Three, you know, he does like three hours. My right. mentor Joel Southton was on there, Ben Greenfield, friend of mine. And but I've watched JRE clips. Mm -hmm. I don't in general, I don't like podcasts, anybody's podcast. I don't listen mm -hmm. to any podcast. I like audiobooks. I'm Same. like, yo, if I'm yeah. gonna listen to two hours, I'm gonna listen to, you know, and no mm -hmm. offense to any of the long, it's just my style. Maybe it's a mistake, but clips are pretty strong. And I've watched mm -hmm. medium length uh, clips too. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, TikTok, like you mentioned, they're very 
clear right now. It's yes. like if you post over one minute content yes. and it's horizontal, you will get more views. Yes. They're telling you that directly. Yes. Unlike all the posts. They're all trying to the compete with YouTube. Exactly. Chinese are ambitious. They're trying to compete They're with like, TikTok. we're coming with ever. We're coming from like, hide your kids, hide your family. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Till of the Huns at the gate, baby. Yeah. The barbarians are at the gate. So, yeah. Well, coming. good, man. I'm glad you came on and we'll have to do it again for anybody once again. If you want the free viral Two resources billion views secrets tylopez.com slash logan f like frank mm -hmm. and it'll redirect you to his website media scaling tylopez.com slash logan f like frank yeah there's oh, great stuff in there thanks for having me on thanks this for was a blast. coming out man yeah, yeah this Absolutely. was good boom